Hello everyone, Master Zero One Zero Zero One here, and in this video, I want to show you guys some of the new things that are new to HardOps Nine Eight Six Underscore Four. So to start out, uh, we'll just press Q and just add a camera to look at this. And I'll look at this in top view, and we'll just position the camera to be a little bit closer, and we'll just move it over. And to look at render view, we see that render view is just a little bit boring. So to spruce it up, we'll press Alt V V and just change to a different environment. Press R to set the look dev to be the render. And so when we press F12, you'll notice that the viewport and the render results are two very different results. And that's unacceptable. So the main thing for this update is that you can now select everything, press Q, go under settings, and unify, evict. Now has sync where if you click on sync by shift clicking on this button, it will sync the settings across your modifiers and their cutters so that whenever you render, you get the exact same result in your render as you do in the viewport. But that's really the update in a nutshell. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Over the course of this last Mercury update, we decided to make it where users could actually opt into different types of arrays. So in the current version of hard ops that you probably have installed right now, if you were to opt into ST3 array V2 and you were to launch it from the button, instead of launching the correct array, it would actually launch the previous version. It would launch the old array. And also if you go under add modifiers and you launch it from here, instead of opting for the new array, it would actually use the oldest array, which isn't really how it should behave if you're opting into the new array to try out. Since they have so many similarities, we've made it where whenever you use the new array, it'll actually show up in all the menus as well where you decide you want it at. So to actually show that in action. So with the latest version installed underscore four, if we go ahead and opt into ST3 array V2, you can see that if I were to launch it from here or even just hover over it, you can see that we're under ST3 adjust array where I can press V and jump into 3D mode and scroll the wheel in order to set the amount of segments in between. And also I can press Q, go under add modifier. And if I were to choose it here, I can also, you know, press V, jump into 3D mode, which is the, um, you know, fancy part of this. Also press G to show graphics for axial, press X to change which axis is being changed. And users have shown to um, be getting used to this at an astounding rate. So we may be um, going forth with this one as our new default in the future. So hopefully users enjoy this new improvement. New to this very small micro update is a new hop shape of rope. So I'll just shift right click to place my cursor and we can just click, which will add a rope. And if we click the curve to select it, we can tap into edit mode and just begin extruding our rope. And it's just a fun way to just quickly add a rope using hops tool. Um, of course, this is just the beginning. We'll be expanding on this a lot more in the future. A fun way that I also like playing with the rope that we were discussing earlier is say, we'll take this cube bevel it. We'll press control A and visual geometry to mesh and I'll bisect it, but I'll slap it on the X and I'll slap it on the other side to just give me this shape. I'll press Q operations and underneath here we'll just choose to turn this to a curve but i'll press x to basically drop it without any sort of depth leaving me with just a curve and if we take this shape and we press Control p uh, we can actually choose curve to form for this instead which is one way to do it but it's not really um, going to work out the way you would hope it's easier to go in the modifier and we'll just get rid of rope kind and we'll just set it to this and we'll set the curve array to also fit this object and voila. I spent a lot of time trying the solenoid on not only my main system, but also multiple other systems to just see how it differs between having a numpad, not having a numpad, being on a laptop, being on a terrible laptop, being on a good desktop, being on a not so good desktop. So one of the things that I noticed when it came to making the um, solenoid is that you know you add your plane you press alt x you press d and you change it to bisect of course notice that the text doesn't update and we bisect it and then we can go under add modifier and choose screw and so whenever we're screwing everything's good and all because i always cut it from the right axis that will jump it into screwing on the x or the y like we see here but having to press y or z or x 
to change axis is just not very intuitive. So for that reason, something better had to be done. With the underscore four version of Hard Ops Mercury, if we take this cube and delete it and we'll insert a plane and I'll press Alt X to bring up my modifier. Notice that now whenever I change the option, it will say the name at the bottom. So we'll just change that to bisect, meaning that we're going to split it, but not add a mirror modifier. So we split it by just choosing the side we want to keep. If we go under Q and we choose screw, we can actually change the axis by pressing X over and over. So it's useful for something like a solenoid, but you know, with a solenoid, I'm usually not going to get the axis wrong. But let's say we had something a little more complex, like a plane, and we just, you know, did some maneuvers on this plane to make it more interesting. Maybe press Alt D, Alt D, Alt D, uh, just to create something a little more visually interesting. And we were to go in and press screw on this. Uh, we could press three to change this to extrude mode and you see that one of the faces showing here is red we could press c to calculate that and just drop this and this is the result that we get the shading is going to be a little bit weird until we sharpen it and now things are looking a little bit more reasonable so after adding a bevel we now have this non-destructive shape built from the extrusion of just a simple edge but that's just some of the improvements for spin in this release All right, so I assume that there's gonna be a few people out there who may love this one. So let's let's look at this. So we got our cylindroid and we we finished modeling it. It looks good and all. So we're just gonna scroll through some blank materials and just give it a blank material. And then we're gonna go in render mode and look at it in render and everything's looking great and all. But whenever you press F12, it doesn't look like the viewport and this can be a little problematic. Well, new to this particular update, if you are to select everything, and go under settings there's now an option under unify evict and now sync and by shift clicking on sync it will actually sync all the viewport settings to be exactly the same in the render so whenever you press f12 you get exactly the result you're supposed to of course there's a little bit of shading issue there so i'm just gonna all click sharpen to add a weighted normal just very quick because we can't even let it look bad in an example but that is how quick it is to get your render settings to be synced up exactly with your viewport settings so even if you're using sort bypass at the very end you could just go in hit sync and everything will just look exactly the way it's supposed to be in the render making sure that your solenoids come out exactly the way they're intended to be Previously in the last edition of Hard Ops, we added a key map display similar to the one that you're seeing here. And we also added the ability to go under settings and bring up your key maps and adjust them. However, now that's been expanded to actually allow you to pop up the entirety of preferences where you can go in and do something like set up a sequential queue menu. You can um, change your helper to be a pop up, use kit ops as a pop up if you want. You can also go in and turn on operator display, but you can also turn on operator background and border. So with these off, if I were to just press Q and S sharpen, it comes up looking pretty generic. However, if we go under the key map and prefs and we turn on the operator background and border, now whenever we go in, you can see that there's now a nice border background. So for 4K Retina displays, there's also been improvements made for BC notifications, where now if you draw a BC notification, it'll display the background as well. And this can also come in useful for, you know, assisting with contrasting against the mesh. Uh, we did have the backgrounds added previously. I just forgot to add it to the BC notifications. So that has now been added. This one's more of a minor thing, but when it comes to mirror, you can press Alt X and it will display a notification letting you know what state you're in. Uh, previously, it would not change the notification whenever you changed the mirror state, and this was something that just kind of drove me crazy, at least when it came to changing the mode. And so now I'm happy to announce that ST3 has went in and actually added support for that. So now it'll display the correct information on the notification to just make mirror a little bit more informative. Whenever it comes to mirror, of course, the best way to get used to it is to look at the top options. When in doubt, you can always press X to just reset mirror to its most default setting of modifier. And then of course, you can choose your operation by dropping it down here and you can choose the pivot point by looking at this one. And those are the two most crucial ones along with the transform orientations, which is uh, also crucial if you're trying to just do something like mirror from view. Mm -hmm.